and woke up in the middle of the night and the room was filled with light and love and the tremendous beautiful feelings you can't even imagine how fabulous it was welcome to the pod by the time it was february of the next year and i was writing a book on the untfila and i was struggling with that too i already got an understanding i had to write my own diary why in order to understand Yom Tefillah um, depth of prayer I need to write a diary okay so I got ready to write my diary and I said I I don't know how to write a diary I don't have any journal entries I can't write a diary how am I going to write a diary I said okay but I'm supposed to do it so okay what I want to do is I want to see a film on the one that wrote the diary the only one that I know Anna Frankie wrote the best diary ever. <laughs> I don't have the, the book. I haven't had it, you know, when I was a child. So I went, okay, I'm going to go and, and look at a film and maybe get an idea what a diary is about. So I watched a film and I saw that it didn't look real. I said, no, that's Hollywood. She had a more difficult life than what they're portraying in that film. Just your own intuition. So I said, no, it's not real. And the next day I started to thinking, I, I'm going to write a critique saying something about that, in, that movie, movie just for me, just so I have a critique. I wanted to look at the critique. I wanted to write it. And then I went to Mincha Marav and I came back and I was sitting, standing in my kitchen. And all of a sudden, in one moment, go write the critique now. Wow. I went right into my base of medrash. I had a base of medrash in my house in, in, New, in New York. And I, I picked out a particular notebook that I wrote my deepest thoughts in. And I started to write the critique. So I, as I was going along, I wrote the first line. And second, then I went down. I got to the twelfth line, and as I'm writing, all of a sudden, I found myself looking up. Well, I was trying to write the, the line, and the pain that it caused her having to do with the different things. So, you know, it was painful. It didn't it didn't look like it in the movie as much as in the pain that it caused her. And as I was writing, all of a sudden, I'm looking up. Hmm. So I looked down at the page, and it said, and the pain that it caused me, me, I'm not talking about me. Why is it on the page, and why am I looking up? I blacked out. And that felt terrible. I said, I don't understand how that can happen, but sure, it's there. All right. I didn't feel anything unusual around me. And I had to make sense out of it. I was already starting to feel bad. And I thought, maybe I didn't write it. But somehow, something controlled me to write it. Just one word, me. But I didn't do it. So I said, okay, let me try the first thing. If you want to write, you can write. I didn't feel anything going on. I thought pretty soon another second I'm going to ask another question or do another thing. But all of a sudden, there I am, and I started to write words. One after another, after another, after another, after another, and I'm going on and writing words. And it was, I didn't know what I was writing. All I knew was I was writing words. And my mind is going through and is saying, oh, the next thing you're going to write is this. And it wasn't. Okay, now it's going to be this. And it's like you have two places. One that's giving you the words to write and your own mind, and you have to shut your own self off. You say, uh-uh, I'm not listening to you. This is coming in here. But I, you, you better listen to me. No, because this is coming in. And so I'm writing what I'm getting from there, nothing else. And fast, 
one word after another, so there's no way to be able to tell what you're writing. And it's going along, and it was five pages. And at a certain point, I felt, ah, it's the this feeling over me is starting to, to dissipate. And then I wrote the last words. You're like and in a trance. Over. You're writing. You're like you can't and really. You're not in a trance. But you, you're not comprehensive of the words you're you're writing. Like you're I not am, looking like. I am watching exa is. exactly because you have to write so fast. You you don't want to scribble. Does it feel like it's not even you that's moving your hand? Do you feel like it's you, but it's not? It's words it's me. Not... It's me moving my hand. I felt it, but then I got to a place where it said, I was going to write the word God. Okay, so I played the G, and I knew what I do. You put a dash, and then you put in a D. That's how I started to do it. I put the G, and then when I went to be able to put the dash, my hand was taken, I had no control, and it wrote an O. So I understood I don't even control my physical body. So I put in a D, and then I looked at it. I so said, that's what I wanted to ask, actually. Like, when you write, do you feel like you're moving your own muscle? You feel like it's like, like kind of like moving by itself. No, you feel like you're moving your arm. Mm -hmm. You're moving your hand. You're doing it. Now, if, if it wasn't like that, I don't know because I never, whenever I wrote all these letters, it's called automatic writing. Whenever I wrote, wrote them, I, I tried to only pay attention to write every single word, and they come so fast. The thing is, is that you have to, sometimes you're scribbling, and then you don't want to go back and look at a word that you can't, you don't know what you wrote. But so you just try it best to, to, to write like that. And then three days later, it took me three days until I could look at it because when I looked at that, I couldn't understand what it said. It was like your mind is like... You could read you, the words on the page though? You, you could read the words. The message. I couldn't understand the message and it, felt, it, it didn't feel right. Feel right. So... I, after two, three, after three days, all of a sudden it comes to the point where you can look at it and see. One of the things that happened in that first letter is it was all the things that I didn't know about Anna Frank. She actually wrote out a letter because she knew I didn't know, and she whatever it was that I needed to know, she wrote it down for me to know things about where she is now and what life was before. And then I had some questions. So if I had a question that came up for a second, immediately she went into that topic and she was writing out that information. Um, information came in there that the world has always wondered about, having to do with her, having to do with things that happened to her in the camps and stuff like that. And she wrote it out in that first letter. And one of the things that also happened is Leah came to the door while I was still writing. And I put down my pen and I went out and I opened the door and I just, like this, I didn't say anything. And she came in. I went right back to the room and to my base medrash and I picked up my pen and paper again and I could still continue writing. It just went like that. And then she came over to the door of the base of Medris. It had these French doors where you have windows you could look inside. And, and my wife was at there and she was smiling at me. And then the next sentence I wrote is, I see your wife. <laughs> that sounds like a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> she Don't is, look at my wife. <laughs> she is beautiful. Enjoy her and never forget about, and don't forget about me. And that's the end. Finished. So it's a good ending. Come on. <laughs> I don't know how much of a good ending that is. That's, uh, that would still be very scary. Were you, how did you, were, how do you were you scared this? at any moment? Were you like confused? Were you like worried? What does this mean? What, what, what were you feeling? What were you thinking while this is happening? I never heard of it. And as far as I knew, that it was the only time it's ever happened in history. You went but, to that, Rav. You went to like, what do you do? Like, as a Jew, like, you're you have clearly a divine thing happening to you. Yes. Or some demonic thing happening to you. One of the two. You don't know yes. at the time, right? But, yes, you don't know. Well, it was such a the feelings were beautiful, 
And then that night I went to bed. And when I and woke up in the middle of the night, and the room was filled with light and love and the tremendous, beautiful feelings. You can't even imagine how fabulous it was. And, you know, I couldn't wake up my wife and say, oh, darling, wake up. The room's full of light. It's <laughs> filled with light. What, you, you know, what does that mean? <laughs> it's dark in here. So, so I went to bed and I thought, maybe it'll be here in the morning. I don't know what it is. I, uh, maybe it has to do with that letter. And I woke up in the morning. It's filled with light. It is beautiful and fabulous. I said, it, it, but it's hard to take it. I mean, it's so strong, my body can't deal with this so well and that that's how it started and now I had all these I told you how I lived and I had these very bad feelings and I lived with them and it came from previous Gilgul's and it came from my life experiences but from that moment on it was gone and replaced with beautiful feelings. You mean you had feelings of previous Gilgul Gilgulim? Like yeah, thoughts and uh, 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 memories? Uh, I, I had memories of Gilgulim, yeah. They have to do with things, you know. When, when did that when, come to you? Starting when I was in my 20s. Wow. First one was a land surveyor. I could see, I didn't know what that was, but later on I, f I found out more what that was. And, uh, and and there were like five that came up over periods of time, but five different lives or five different lives. That's interesting because there's like five levels of the soul. Maybe you had like you were made up of these five different. You know, name for every soul level. Yeah, like, like from nephesh all the way to. Wow. So what I what yeah. what happened in this case is that those melancholy feelings. They went. And there's not uh, anybody that knows, uh, lives with those sad feelings inside, even no matter how much you work on yourself, sometimes you get up above them and you're happy, happy, happy. And all of a sudden you can go down into them again. Because if you have a Gilgul that still is working through these things, it'll, it'll affect you. And I was working with my Gilgul and he said, I know what I'm going to do for you, and I'm trying this, I'm trying that. And this can be maybe for some people even unconscious, like they don't even remember their Google, but they're dealing with certain feelings. Certain feelings, yes. Certain feelings that are soul deep. It's not just subconscious, mm -hmm. soul deep. Yeah, that's so why I don't learn. I don't like learning Gemara so much because I already, you know, I finished it in my last Gilgul. Sure, sure. So now, <laughs> so now I like with the Zohar and what's he doing? Rav Chaim Vital says this, by the way. You know, Rav Chaim Vital says this. Oh yes, he does. Yeah, yeah. he says that the uh, person sometimes you're not connected to like learning uh, Pshat because in previous lives you didn't pay attention to Pnei Miuta Torah, you didn't pay attention to the deeper meanings of the Torah, but all you did was Pshat. So now you come back, you don't want it as much. And you go and you chase after the Zohar and the Chassidic. Lovely. That's it's some Gemara lovely. Together. It is amazing. The, the Zohar and everything has to do with mysticism and everything. It's, it's, it's fabulous. It's a fabulous yeah. thing. But one thing that you, you learn er, very early on is that you don't want to be afraid. So whatever happens, you're, you decide you're not going to be afraid. And that's it. when when you're talking about what happened with Anna at the very beginning. Um, there came a time after a few days, and I was writing already, I think it was my fourth letter, the third or fourth, and at a certain point that evening, I, got an, an, uh, I started to get an understanding. Maybe, maybe it's not Anna, or maybe it's a real bad one that I shouldn't have, a bad spirit. Yeah. I don't know what it's doing here. Maybe it's a bad spirit. No, I cannot think about that. It, no, it's not like that. She's fabulous. And I got later. It was later, and I was writing something on the computer, and I was writing this. It came back again. The thought, maybe, maybe, it's a bad spirit. Oh no. Could it be, the. I stopped myself, Satan. 
And then I went back to it again, and all of a sudden, I got a message, and it's, shut that thing off. And go to bed. It was a computer. She was very, very upset. And I did. I set it off, and I went to bed, and I left it. In the morning, she was gone. And then that was a terrible, terrible, terrible feeling. And I did it myself. I, I didn't, I, how do you, what do you do now? So I, that night I davened very strongly for her spirit to come up, come back. And I, I spent an hour in Mariv working on that until finally I got an idea of a certain place there. Come back. And then while I was davening, it started to come back. And then I started to go, <laughs> and more and more. And finally I finished davening. I started to go home. It was still coming back. <laughs> I was like really, really happy inside. And I got home and write a letter. All right. I took out my notebook. I didn't like the sound of that. I started to write. It says, you hurt my feelings. A few other words. It was a very short letter. And she said, don't do that again. I warn you. When you get a warning. You see, when you're dealing with the spirit world, you have no control. You can't see anything. You, 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 if you're getting a communication but you can't see anything, you feel like something had happened to you. What was she you warning you for? Because I hurt her feelings. But what was she warning you for? That was the question. What can she do? I knew that if I wanted to write a letter, I wanted to write a dash, and she took my hand, and she, she has control. And it's such a big control that I don't have any control. I can't say, no, you can't fight with this. The only thing that you can do is, is be kind and be right. And I didn't do it. You not avoid communicating? Or yet, or yet mm -hmm. anymore. You not just like avoid communicating? Like, but at I'm the time sure you I could. Kind of, you, were, you, you enjoyed it though because it felt good. I enjoyed it so much. It felt so good. And after a few weeks, it comes to the point where you can't be without it.